Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to Ministry Hacks. Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a basic live stream using an A10 Mini Pro, a laptop, a Rode Wireless Go 2 mic, and a couple of cameras. Here we go. Check it out. So as you can see, we have our basic setup going on here. We have a laptop, and for us it's a 2019 MacBook Pro. It's not the newest MacBook out there, but it is more than capable of handling a live stream. We have it plugged in. We want to always make sure you got your power adapters hooked up to everything because it could die on you. And if you're streaming something like a church service that's 60 minutes or more, um, it will kill your battery. So you want to make sure you have external power hooked up there. All right. We have our A10 Mini Pro by Blackmagic Design. Um, as I said in our video on our just live portable setup um, and if you want to check that out there's a video link uh, check that out i think this is the best thing that you can invest in other than getting your basics like a camera computer some something to protect your gear um, but this thing is a live video switcher it's a video encoder and it's a video streamer so it's super cool super versatile it's not very much money i'll put a link in the description below for this and all the products that we have here today if you want to check it out and add it to your setup but again the a10 mini pro we got two cameras here today. We have a older Panasonic Lumix GH2. This thing's like 15 years old. Um, very out of date, um, as many people will tell you. But what I will tell you is that you can use it as a live stream webcam using the A10 Mini Pro. And then our other camera, we have a Blackmagic Design Pocket Cinema Camera 4K. All right. And then the some of the other things that we have hooked up here, right? We got a external SSD hard drive. It's a one terabyte hard drive by SanDisk. It's connected with a Thunderbolt 4 cable. As I mentioned in our live stream uh, portable setup gear is that you don't want a cable to be the reason you can't capture your, uh, your uh, video because it just couldn't hang with the, the requirements that it needs. And so a Thunderbolt 4 cable supposedly can do up to 40 gigabytes per second, should be more than enough bandwidth to handle those 4K files transferring to your SSD as long as it has a high read and write speed, which the SanDisk Extreme Pro does. And so we have those cameras set up. We have our Rode Wireless Go 2 mic pack. Right, we have our receiver here. It's actually plugged into our A10 Mini Pro. And then we have the other mic Right here, this is the transmitter um, that will connect to the lapel mic that's on my shirt, as you can see. So that is our audio for this. And so when you're hooking this all up, right, again, you wanna have power to everything. We have power to our laptop. We have power to the A10 Mini Pro. As you can see, it's on. Our cameras are on and they're charged. But what I like to do is have a power adapter hooked up to our cameras during service because our service is over 60 minutes and a lot of these cameras battery life just won't hang in there that long. So again, you don't want a power source to be the reason that you couldn't capture or stream your service. All right, so we have everything there. When we're hooking up our stuff together, right, we have a, another Thunderbolt or a USB-C cable here going from our USB-C output from the A10 Mini Pro, goes right into our MacBook Pro here. And what that allows us to do is it actually sends the feed and then through our laptop, that's where the live stream is actually sent out and broadcast to the world. We have a HDMI out on the back of the A10 Mini Pro, which goes to our external monitor. And so one thing you do need, if you're gonna use the A10 Mini Pro, you need an external monitor. It doesn't have to be a big TV like this. It could be a small little six inch display. And they sell some of those as well, which are actually super cool and sweet. Or it could just be a really old monitor you have sitting around as long as it has an HDMI input it will work and so when you plug it in and you turn on your monitor this is what you will get so you'll get this whole thing you can see our cameras are on but you have camera one camera two camera three and camera four so you have up to four cameras say one of them you want it to be an iphone you could do that if you wanted to you could have another camera it's a sony um, the alpha 7 i don't know what what you might be using but you can really use any camera here and you'll see those camera inputs then we have our preview this is what we're currently on so we're on camera one and then we have our program that's what our audience would be seeing so if this is black that means that our live stream audience if we're streaming their screen is black as well so they're not going to see anything until we actually switch something on there now you can see we have um, some video going right we're going to just fade that back to black so you want to hook up your external monitor hdmi out 
And then of course you hook up your cameras with an HDMI cord. Um, for our Panasonic Lumix GH2, again, it's a very old camera and it has a mini HDMI port in it that goes out. And so we had to have a special cable, a mini HDMI to an HDMI that's hooked up there. And then we have a regular HDMI to our Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera over here. Um, and then the last but not least, we have our Rode Wireless Go 2 pack hooked up here for our audio. So we have clean audio no matter which camera angle we might be streaming on, the audio would stay the same. So that's hooked up, plugged into mic number one. Now, once you have everything set up, it's plugged in, it's kind of ready to go. You can see it's rocking and rolling, at least the setup. Now we wanna open up our laptop. And then what you're gonna do is you wanna download OBS. OBS is an open source software. It allows you to stream. It's free online. I'll have a link in the description for that if you need to find it. But it's free, very versatile. Many streamers use it, professional ones. Just because it's free doesn't mean that it's bad or cheap. It's actually very good software. And so you can see we opened up OBS here. The next thing you wanna do once you have OBS opened is you're gonna to wanna to set up your stream settings. So you go to settings and you get this list here. And we'll go to stream, all right? And for us, our service that we use is Restream. Um, Restream is a great option. It allows you to stream to multiple platforms at the same time. You're not losing quality. Your stream, it's, it's great. I can't say enough about it. You could stream to Facebook Live, YouTube. You could stream to Twitter all at the same time. You could even do multiple accounts on each platform if you wanted to do that and go that route. And so it's great. But say you don't have a paid subscription for Restream or any of those types of things. Um, what you could use is say your Facebook live say you wanted to go live on facebook that's where you're going to be live streaming most of the time you'll plug in your facebook server there your facebook stream key you'll have to go into facebook and set that all up but then you copy paste the stream key in here hit apply hit okay and you're ready to go same thing with youtube set up a live stream on youtube get your stream key plug it in here apply hit okay you're pretty much ready to go a couple other settings to make sure you take note of Right, we got our output here, which gives us some options. We have streaming, recording, audio, um, replay buffer. When you're streaming, the streaming tab is the one that you want to pay attention to. Make sure your output actually matches what you're putting out on your A10 Mini Pro. The A10 Mini Pro can only do 1080p at the max resolution, which is more than good. So don't think like, oh man, I need 4K. Most people don't stream in 4K. They, they stream in 1080p, they record it at the same time and capture it in 4K, and then afterwards they do post-production and they re-upload it in 4K. That's what most people will do. So because the stream in 4K takes a massive amount of bandwidth and Wi-Fi, and even if you have the internet capability to stream in 4K, most of your streamers will not have the internet capability to stream that in 4K in real time. And so this puts it out in 1080p. We wanna make sure our streaming settings on OBS match that. So we have 1920 by 1080, right? We have our encoder at 264. That's the best um, codec for live streaming on YouTube and things of that nature. It plays well with everything. We wanna make sure our bit rate is set up. A good bit rate, and you can look this up. Um, I'll put a, a link to an article in the description below. You can see what each platform might want, but for 1080, for the most part, somewhere around 3,500 um, kilobytes per second to 5,000 is kind of where you wanna be for 1080. If you're trying to stream in 4K, you want something around 80,000. That just kind of shows you how much more information you're pushing out, but that, that's what you wanna make sure. So we have ours set up at 3,500. It seems to work well, our rate control, CBR there. Um, we have our, this one's not set up right now, but our key in, keyframe interval, we actually want that at two seconds. If you're streaming to something like Twitter, you want that to be three, um, but each platform has a little bit different options there, but making sure we can optimize it as much as we can control here. All right, you wanna hit apply. And then a couple other things to check, make sure your audio is set up that you got, we have our Blackmagic design as our audio source. So it comes from the A10 Mini Pro, pushes through that USB-C cable into here. That's the audio we want our audience to hear. Um, but say you wanted your computer to be the audio that they hear, you could plug that in. 
other mics, other inputs you could do as well. And then you wanna also, before you're done here, make sure the video tab matches that resolution. So again, we're streaming in 1080, so we want that 1920 by 1080 as the base canvas resolution. And then we also want our output resolution as that 1920 by 1080, so it all matches up. And then the last part too, we wanna to make sure our frames per second match what we're actually shooting and streaming in. So say you have this set to 60 frames per second, but your camera is only set to 24 or 30, there might be a little bit of weirdness in your stream. So trying to match it to what you're streaming, we like to go with 24 frames per second. We're not streaming a, a sports event, um, and so there's not this high action packed um, film that we're trying to do. We just wanna stream a basic um, church service. And so 24 frames per second allows us to do that, and it's less, data that we're trying to push through the internet for that live stream and so hopefully the theory would be there'd be a little bit less lag time in there with 24 frames per second versus 60 frames per second but you could set it up to 60 frames per second if you wanted to do that but do note that some of the platforms don't allow you to stream at 60 frames per second i think twitter uh, the max is 30 frames per second youtube you could stream up to 60 frames per second um, but just make sure the platform you're streaming on allows that frames per second, all right? And so we wanna set that up. Once it's all good, we hit apply, we hit okay. And then from there, if everything's plugged in, we like the way it looks, we got all of our video sources, audio sources plugged in. All we need to do now with the stream key plugged in is we hit this button up here, start streaming. Boom, once we hit start streaming, this thing's gonna go live. Uh, and if it's hooked up to Restream like ours will, it's gonna go live on Facebook Live, on our YouTube channel, as well as our Twitter account. And so all those three platforms will have the same stream going at the same time. Now, of course, our program, if we're going live, well, our program's dark. So someone might actually comment in the chat and they'll be like, hey, I can't see anything. And you're looking over here at the preview, you're like, oh, why can't you see anything? Well, it's because you haven't put anything on the program yet. So we wanna to go to camera two, boom, there we go, camera two is live. But now someone in the chat's like, hey, I can see it, but I can't hear anything. Well, that's because over here on our program, this is what the audio that our audience is hearing, well, they don't have anything going on. We got stuff going on here, mic one, right? That's our microphone going in there. We got audio on camera one because it has its mic on as well. But what we want our program audience to hear is what we have here. And so we wanna make sure, boom, we turn that on, now all of a sudden you can see that the audience has audio there. Now, what we're looking at, right, is the level's going out, now it's hitting into that red. We don't want that, that means that it's peaking, that means there's gonna be static, there's gonna be just, it's gonna sound terrible, especially if you're doing music and worship and you got guitar, you got background tracks, maybe you have keyboard, drums, especially bass, um, that thing's gonna be peaking and it's just gonna sound so staticky and bad. And, but the nice thing about the A10 Mini Pro is that you can adjust that on the fly. So say, I'll go camera one again, right? Say we wanna adjust that, it's a little bit peaking. We can go right here, A10 Mini Pro, mic one. It has the audio volume adjustments. It's actually for the gain. And actually we're gonna lower that down. And so as we are lowering it, see it's at negative three decibels, right? We can go a little bit lower. And now we got that in a nice range where it's right there in the green, a little bit of yellow. That's kind of where we want, that's the sweet spot. Maybe even we wanna bring it down a little bit more to where it's more in the green and every once in a while hits that yellow. It might be a little soft, but now if the audience types in the chat like, hey, it's a little soft today, I can't hear, you can adjust that real quick on the fly. And I love that about the A10 Mini Pro. You don't need a bunch of extra gear and stuff to get your audio to where you want it. Now, as we're streaming, again, we got our different camera options, right? Camera one, camera two, but say for us, like we have a little bit of an intermission. So worship happens and then we say, hey, take some time to meet and greet those around you, grab some coffee, grab your Bible and grab your seat, right? And so in that time, we like to cut to a still and we have this preloaded into the A10 Mini Pro and you can preload different media um, right in there. Maybe you wanna preload um, in, a logo, right? You could do that if you wanted to, but we've re preloaded this and just says, welcome, we will begin soon. That way our live stream audience knows that they're in the right place. Um, they're not, they're not late. They didn't miss anything. Like they know like, hey, it's on, it's streaming. 
we're going to start here very shortly. And so we'll have that go. And then once someone steps up there to the pulpit um, and they're about to start their teaching or they're welcoming people, well, now we're going to cut back to camera one and then boom, there we go. And now we're on, we're ready to rock and roll. And then say we get towards the end of the service. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Make sure you like and subscribe to our channel to stay tuned for more content like this. Have a blessed week. And we want to cut out, fade to black, boom. Make sure the audio's off. And we're done there. And then all you have to do in OBS is hit stop streaming. And then the stream is over. It will end automatically. And then it's available for your YouTube, Facebook, Twitter audiences. Unless you have d uh, chosen different settings in YouTube, you can ac actually disable it that once you're done going live, it will make it a private video so people can't go back and watch it, which is kind of nice if you're going to upload a 4K option later on. While we're talking about this is that while we stream in 1080p through OBS, we're actually capturing the same um, video on our Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4Ks. We're capturing that in 4K to our external hard drives, right? And that's why it's important to have those cables, right? We have Thunderbolt 4 cables to help it um, be able to push that data through so we don't have dropped frames or corrupt files, um, things of that nature. But we capture all of our video in 4K so that after the service is over, we actually bring that video down off of YouTube and then we go to a post-production workflow and we start to cut and edit that 4K footage and then we re-upload it to YouTube. That way people, when they're watching later on, they have a good quality stream because we wanna bring the best to our audience. And so we do that. And so make sure you capture that, but you need some, some large SSDs. Again, we use a one terabyte. And so just for instance, if you don't know much about live streaming or, or recording in 4K, if you're recording, say, a 60-minute service in 4K, a 60-minute service in that resolution is going to be about 500 gigabytes. So that's half a terabyte, just, and that's just one camera. So if you have two cameras recording in, in UHD, 60-minute service, right, you're talking that's a terabyte right there for one service alone. Now that's just the raw files after you edit it and you actually export it in 4K and it compresses it, it comes out to somewhere around 20 gigabytes for a 60 minute service. So it's not terrible, but just have that in mind that as you're editing through this stuff and you're looking to add new gear and software and hardware to your live stream and your recording setup, that it does take some massive storage. So if you don't have that yet, make sure you budget for that um, bigger hard drives. Make sure your computer's capable of it. Uh, this MacBook Pro right here, it's a great MacBook, but I mean, it cannot handle um, a terabyte of video and editing it. I mean, I can, it, it's possible, but it takes a century to do it because it bogs down the whole computer. And so while it's trying to render video, you, can't, you literally can't do anything else. So you wanna make sure you have a computer that's capable of actually handling that. I have another computer. Um, that we use it has a four terabyte hard drive and so we uh, load those files on there so we can edit it on the fly export it there's plenty of space and then after it's all said and done we delete those files those big 500 uh, gigabyte files to free up space because we have our edited version of our final product so that's our basic live stream setup using an a10 mini pro a laptop a couple of cameras and the rode wireless go to mics i hope this was helpful for you if it was let me know in the comments below and make sure you subscribe for more content like this on our channel thanks for watching guys stay tuned for the next one peace out